But what do you think about these two players coming at us for this one? Max Angel versus Trigger. I know you're a big fan of both of these lads. What do you think? Yeah. I think Trigger wins to here. To put it in context, I there think Trigger are is going four to win. players in the North American region who I, I would say maybe you could say like five players sometimes. Okay, I have to update my, uh, stand above my stream the rest title, in guys. Terms of like Australia's house and just like they were hanging out and having a good time. Says Europe. This is going to be a very fun match. I'm sure filled with like all kinds of fun little mind games and all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, fun fact about that, that little trip, uh, trigger. So I live pretty close to the airport around, uh, well, where, where trigger was flying mm, out of. Maybe and tiny bit of bastards bias, but I just think trigger is going nowhere. to win. So he was like, Hey, uh, it's always very close between these two. Before. Trigger should have won many times in the past. He did win the last very important series. These two guys played when they were qualifying for the masters Coliseum. Trigger won that one to be the only NA representative. I just think Trigger uh, he's, wins. He's so polite. He's he's anyone who's met Trigger, like he's yeah, he's very very neat. I like I like Trigger as a person a lot. He's, I don't know about that uh he's so snicker, young, but... but like the difference between him when he's like playing a game of StarCraft versus him just, you know, anywhere. Let's else just say that they have all the tools to win. So if they don't win now, playing, and hopefully we'll see that it's, right here. No, it has nothing to do with balance or maps or anything. We're gonna get into Let's it. Let's just be on this. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized I didn't set it up very well. We have <laughs> Love you too, down Corgan. The right for Basilisk, mm. it is Trigger. Nathania streams five days a week, Rana. He legitimately streams five days a week. And over here in the top left-hand side of the map, we have our blue Protoss player. He is Astrea. Angel. The easiest server to get GM is probably NA just because yeah, of the lack of great players. But obviously uh, getting GM is always somewhat hard. But right now, if there is one server that if you just want to get GM and you don't care about how good of a player it makes you, obviously NA is the easiest. You know, only 90s kids would get, and then Trigger would be like the Zoomer who gets. All I may have bias in who I cheer for, but I don't have bias in my predictions. Yeah, if you guys just ask me yeah, straight up, I listen to like Linkin Park and all these other bands and stuff from the 90s, and I listen to Backstreet Boys. I'm like, he's not casting anymore. Like, Anyone can you're cast, right? The wrong generation, man. Like, <laughs> no one gets so stopped from getting his hands on the replay and casting it, or nobody gets stopped fun. from casting You're online tournaments guy. that are free and, uh, also really so fun six sense of humor. anyone can like cast if they want to cast you know i can say but he's not a part of the casters for the spring region also, also but i love that is for very cool. different reasons but they're both just like such lovable guys astray is like the stream is a bit laggy by the way right now of the protoss race who you can't like yeah. i like hate astraya any percent challenge has no record posted because you just can't hate <laughs> the guy. Like, it's not possible. Yeah. Anyone who's hating on Astrea, they've got a problem with me personally. They may not have met me, but they've done something <laughs> somewhere that makes me just like, dude, like, no. Like, you, yeah. he is just such a sweetie pie and such a, such a great personality. Uh, I'll also say, like, specifically about that, I know there are definitely a lot of people, as of course we do have PvP, the intro, beginning of the game, there's not too much happening. We'll see what happens after, like, we see the additional openings and stuff from these units and everything. is double adept for trigger, stalker sentry for Astraea. Cool. But Astraea, I think there's a lot of people who are very nice people. Mm, but then mm -hmm. they're also, like, to put it a little bit, like, meanly, like, sometimes they can also be a little bit blander. Like, they're very PC all the time and everything. Astraea also has, like, a little bit of a fun streak about him where he's, like, such a nice person, but also he's still willing to, like, have fun and poke, like, poke a little bit of fun at people and meme around and stuff and say, like, some slightly mean-seeming things, but it's just, like, with such a big grin and smile on his face, like, oh, I know you're kidding and you're just such a lovable teddy bear. Please stab me with your knife in the back. I, I love it. And he's right. like, haha, it was rubber. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah. mm, so cute. Um, but like, honestly, super, super wholesome lads. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. now we do have to talk oh. about what has happened here. Double Adept versus no There's wall. No this is super weird that he didn't go for the wall in here. And he is going to lose three, three pro. Oh, oh no, what he's a not. Safe. Psych. Get juked. That was safe, six safe. Sending the probe into the gas guys are dodging the shot. Very, very nice. I, I also, I was a little bit surprised also because the wall in for Estrella with his gateways and stuff happens on the far side away from the ramp mm -hmm. rather than the area where I thought maybe like you kind of wall in so that the depth have to shade a longer distance around or something at least so it's kind of like what I call the Roddy bait wall where 
yeah it looks like it's a really good wall or like place for a depth of shade on in but then it's actually a trap and you just end up losing the depth like that didn't make any sense you didn't wall off like this you didn't do what you're supposed to do in pvp but no it it didn't even look like that to me for Australia. this is just like a clean pathway for the depths to make their way in yeah um but with only getting two probes as he saved that third one i actually yeah. think i i still like it a little bit for Astrea. uh he is oh, down in workers a couple but i don't know i i just love when like little stuff like that happens where it's like they jump into the gas and save the worker i'm like oh yeah that's the good stuff right there that's the micro i i dream of doing one day <laughs> when i finally grow up no, it was a compliment. Why would I be fuming? Cool <laughs> he was being nice Korea. to me. Handful of the sentries, so no, not fuming. I, I I used to have very bad great. walls. For the longest and time, I had very bad walls. Only after like four or five years, I decided to wall off with the right building. After that, it became meme. Before that, yes, my walls were very bad. But now Hero's bringing it back in the year 2022. He said, like, no, Roddy, those walls were sick. <laughs> and I was like, really? I stopped with it seven years ago. And Hero's like, no, 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 it's sick. <laughs> He's gotten his own immortal. Quick Dark Shrine, by the way, guys. I, I think that, I think you do land on a really good point. Like, the War Prism just gives so much potential. Trigger is going to be going for a Dark Shrine behind this, which <laughs> is... Away. Oh. Uh, is, I mean, as long as he's not taking the th third... It should be fine. Is there shield battery at the natural? Probably not. Trigger's not a big fan of building uh, shield batteries. He, he doesn't n all, like absolutely know that he needs Ooh, uh, hallucination. So yeah. There, okay. There is I just got the cutest the natural, email. But the are I will not say who it was from, right so here. don't this worry. Don't get nervous. And I'm gonna read it out after this fight, big, or after this a game. Big immortal in the front, and it feels like Astrea for just a second believed maybe it was real. I don't think the like, trigger dies here. He's got immortals. Oh, nice He's got shield battery overcharge. He's fine. Well, it actually ends up, ends up getting one unit. Oh, this, the fight is still going on. Hey, I think, DTs on are gonna slap here, by the way, guys. Yeah, and he grabs the Mate, immortal. go back to your battery. What are you doing? You've got DTs line. coming up. Great force yeah. fields now. Let's go back to your battery, please. We have an observer. We yeah, have we two. have two observers, but there DTs are still going to be sick. Out on the map right now, but I want to note that one of the observers is still making its way back over to the main base. It does finally make its way over there, but did force out a recall on a couple of those units, which does force Astrea back as well because he lost so many units. It should have gone better for Trigger if he just stayed near his battery. I think he would have been totally fine. Losing the Immortal kind of sucked. Such a nice job of managing to make a defense happen. Where I want to note that hallucinated War Prism sent four of stalkers uh four of trigger stalkers over the main base right as that push came in yeah. that looked like such a dangerous moment and trigger came out of that looking like he's actually okay he's still gonna be down a few workers he's still in a kind of weird spot over here right now but he has archons finished up he has or sorry he has archon ability for that to be made with the dark templar he's able to find a little bit of damage and he's actually doing a little bit of counter damage now yeah, uh, we will see the double adepts into the main base. They're going to be annoying to deal with here. Okay, Australia just picking up and getting out of there. We do have Ooh, that the one, Archon the is cool that you enough. alluded to. I don't know if it can actually help too much here. It's obviously going to break those force fields and allow the army to retreat out easily. But the guardian or the battery overcharge will make it so that you can't really. Thank you, Andrew. Around. Legend. It is still a low gateway count for Australia. He just now started two more. Trigger added on an extra gateway with intention of being aggressive here. And he's got that Blink Stalker upgrade. This is looking kind of scary right now. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of potential here, but the third Immortal really does make things a lot more difficult here. The fact that Estrella wasn't able to kind of break through in that first push-in before the third Immortal, before an extra shield open? battery and stuff finished up, I think it makes things a lot tougher. And you can kind of see that oh. Estrella has still been able to be annoying with these two adapts. Sorry, I thought I heard the echo of the Gifted Sub like two or three times, but... Those were just oh different God. warping sounds almost, of the game. <laughs> almost ended up saving all of his pros, but the pros go back to mining because they're very ignorant of the fact that there's danger about it. <laughs> yeah, they do not have the greatest survival instincts, uh, no. workers in general. They, My workers have terrible survival instincts. Oh, okay, I was going to say, that's a bold move from Trigger to just move right under the Observer, but I guess he was expecting that the Observer wasn't there. Uh, this is GG, right? Pro, Trigger is dead. Uh, 61 workers against 54 with an army supply lead. No, I don't think it's GG. I don't think Australia is a little bit ahead, but not a whole lot, so no. 
I think, uh, also if I've learned one thing about PvP between these two, is that games are never over. <laughs> and especially with Australia, because I feel like Australia really likes to have a lot of fun, and he doesn't want to end things early. It's like this is his little moment in the spotlight, and he wants to make the best of it. I don't think this game is going to end anytime soon. With really high immortal counts relative to what we usually see in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, Immortals have definitely been showing uh, to be quite fearsome. But I do agree with you that Australia is ahead. I am really, really curious. Uh, we see that Shadow Stride is being researched here for Trigger. I feel like the game is kind of in an, an interesting stabilized spot where Australia does have like a very notable worker lead. But both these players are grabbing their fourth bases. Their armies are like looking relatively similar in power level, I feel like. I mean, yeah. Trigger's a little bit behind maybe in the weapon upgrade that you were talking about, but I really do feel like this is kind of an even game, but then I see that and I keep thinking yeah. that and then I keep looking at the worker supply and I'm like, Australia is up to like 15, almost 20 workers. And I think that gap is starting to close now as Trigger starts to like remake some workers a little bit more quickly. But it's it's so funny because I my brain just can't quite wrap my head around like who's actually in a better spot right now <laughs> well i think until the fourth base completed uh that worker count wasn't as impactful but now yeah. that it's done and now that Estrella is mining from it i mean he's basically has it instantly fully saturated not even basically he has it instantly fully saturated uh whereas trigger it's taking him a little bit longer to actually saturate that well actually i guess it's saturated for him as well but it's still a small economic lead for Estrella. he mm -hmm does have what's the gas count right now it's six gases for astrea versus just four for trigger so that's that's kind of where the extra income is at this point where those extra probes are going and that is allowing astrea to go for things like the double robo colossus transition uh the second forge i still like astrea's position quite a bit more but mm -hmm. trigger's got cards to play yeah no absolutely i think both these players have a solid chance of a uh making some plays happen in this game like you said robotics may finish colossus are sick we are gonna see double colossus i've been a fan for a while guys Australia. all right not gonna be going into any of those disruptors no 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 we are bringing it back and saying i'm gonna be able to deal with any kind of big charge lot swells and everything that you have which is just kind of funny when you look at the current compositions right now because you're like well trigger has five zealots you know but the current disruptor is actually not before. that sick uh, the old ones, seen, sure, the old ones were like a mega hard counter, but ever since they about, yeah, nerfed you know, like the uh, radius a little bit, I actually think Colossus are pretty good against Disruptors. But there aren't even that many Zealots to speak of for Trigger. No, no, uh, there's not that many at all. It's pretty much Stalker Immortal, but Immortals do struggle to actually get on top of Colossi once they have Not this patch, but the patch before, and the anyway. upgrades for Astrea are obviously going to be really beneficial here. We are going to see a fight breaking on out. Force fields will grab one immortal. Uh, Trigger is in trouble the because the army of Australia is going to be so to much better. Forward a little bit. DTs on the left side do deny the fifth base, and at War Prism in the main base, uh, good positioning on the stalkers will be able to deal with it. I think there's a DT in the side there still. Standard Thermal Lance finishing up. It's very rare to see just two Colossus made. As the War Prism does go down to a cannon, a little bit unfortunate right there. Uh, trigger not really able to find too much more value. And finally, actually, they, those DTs might win the fight against that. Oh, yeah, they definitely win that fight. But it's going to be taking a few losses here or there. Another immortal gets sniped off. These Colossus oh, really finding up. a lot of value and just punishing the army as it's retreating. But, oh, this Ooh. turns into potentially a scary surround. Yeah. A big blink forward there from Trigger. Sykes off Australia doesn't really have losses. that many immortals. Be so he needs to be a bit no, careful. Reinforcements for Australia catching all of those immortals on the left hand side. Yeah, but meanwhile, Trigger finds... Uh, Immortals are very exposed now. The what the hell? Who's flanking who? Zealous coming in from Estrella on the top side as well, helping it a lot. There's still so many Immortals for Trigger. <laughs> what a fight. He actually retained his Immortal count really well there. And now he blinks forward, kind of catches... Trigger is actually winning this fight now. <laughs> and Trigger just took an amazing sequence right there. I don't even know how to call it a fight because it was like three <laughs> separate mini fights all in one. But yeah, that went very well for Trigger. Yeah, continued reinforcements for both sides from different angles really turned that into a very chaotic fight. But like you said, all of the Immortals being retained there for Trigger, he somehow managed to keep those alive. And now, if he can just turn his way through these Zealots, he is going to have a very, very strong edge in this fight. Yeah, Australia has so much money. If he could spend it, he'd be fine. But 
another blink forward. He tries to snipe off a Colossus. He manages to get it as well. Immortal still in the back line, really disincentivizing Astraea from making any more of these stalkers of his own. And the Nexus is going to end up... Bit of a throw by Astraea, obviously. But economy. He sick has comeback. <laughs> out on the map right now. And this is looking to be such a scary spot for Astraea. Yeah, that was really well done by Trigger. <laughs> SRI. Uh, it was a yeah. super weird chaotic fight. Now I am almost willing to agree, but it's not over yet completely because it's still NA PvP. But I think now Trigger's lead is bigger than Australia's lead was when you wrote it the first time. The plus three weapons getting denied in the main base, and that's quite nice for Australia. But he is really far down in army quality right now, as well as, well, actually, as I say, that army supply is about to even out. Uh, but army quality is is quite a big difference in this one. We got a lot of zealots for Astrea, whereas you know Trigger's got a lot of those immortals, quite a few more stalkers, and I I am quite impressed with how well the immortals have been handling themselves. Now we do have to note the upgrades are about to be well they're already three two versus two zero one, but they're going to shortly be three three upgrades, and if. I mean, without splash damage for Trigger, it is going to be really hard to overcome an upgrade disadvantage. We already saw a really good fight from him, but mm -hmm. Astraea is going to max out very soon once more, and that's going to mean these upgrades become highly impactful again. No, I think that's definitely going to be the case. I do like the Trigger is finally oh, mixing is in sick. a couple of disruptors. These DT run by is also going to be a little bit threatening because oh, War Prism warps in forge. successfully all these Zealots, and the DTs take care of the cannons. Trigger also hitting in the top right hand side. He's knocking out three different bases at once right now. That was very unfortunate for Astraea. Astraea accidentally clicked his own Nexus on that one, and that's why he didn't snipe the Warp Prism before uh. the Warp In went through. A tragic misclick, really costing him hard, and not able to defend his fifth Nexus. Well, I guess actually that was his sixth Nexus. I, I don't know what's happening Nexus. anymore between he these two, really man. get cleaned up. But Trigger is really making moves in this last, I don't know, three minutes, four minutes, maybe even five mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Oh, He's finally got up another four. Oh, my God. Now Trigger is going to take a really oh, bad fight, I think. He might be getting caught from a couple of different angles over here. Oh. Surround with the Archons of the Stalkers. A blink forward over to the backside of his attack. The Immortals from Astraea are really trying to put in some work. The and Trigger just lost 18 probes, guys. Two DTs, I think, of Astraea or Zealots, whatever. Honestly, a good trade there for Astraea. Also finding one of the mining bases uh, over there and they triggers trying to fire back with some of his dts of his own why can't they never be ball. normal i think Australia is unless he uh, unless he loses his base over here which it looks like he may very well Australia's is probably going to be happy with how the army trades went but i think trigger still is going to be okay as long as he can clean up back at home man what is up with these na pvps this season and <laughs> yes. being absolute bangers we have gotten so many great pvps already and we are in store for another one. Nice warp in there from Trigger. We'll deal with this. More Zealot run bys on the other side. Battery Overcharge will be able to keep that cannon alive. It just finished in time in order to survive and be healed up. We are going to see Astraea maybe try to put bite off a little more than he can chew. Pushing down the ramp. I don't know about this one. Battery Overcharge, I believe, has been and popped that's a on sick the bottom army. side. But I do know about this so one. This is a sick army. In Astraea's army. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I feel like unless the Destructors get some big hits over here, Trigger can't really push in very easily into that army of Astraea. Astraea, especially if he gets any kind of reinforcing warp-ins. Oh, but it looks like he side. warped in back at home to deal with any kind of run-by attempts. Oh, man, uh, this is... God, this game oh is God, so wild. There's a big blink forward right there. Huh? Huge Disruptor shot finding two of those Archons. And Trigger is able to get some really nice Disruptor connections. Trigger's outmining his opponent quite significantly at this point. Astraea really took his licks, really took some big hits to the face, and he is recovering his economy. He's rebuilding one of these bases now, but he is in some big trouble. Disruptor shot <laughs> will get targeted Ooh. down. Both of them oh getting my targeted God. down, but there's a huge blink forward. One Colossus falls, two oh my Colossus God. is going to go down. But Trigger what is made? losing a lot to these Immortals what? and Archons, and the reinforcing Zealots from Astraea just turned that fight into kind of a massacre. It's really tough when you do that aggressive link forward. It's really hard to actually focus fire down any units because you don't want to just overkill. But that meant that all of the Immortals and all of the Colossus were just getting low at the same time, but none of them actually dying. They were just doing all the damage. And so at the end of the day, Trigger 
was able to still somehow stabilize over there. Oh, oh. Potentially big disruptor shot over there. Australia has gone full Terran on us in the last minute. And he just walks in range of the disruptors and he just keeps on killing them. Australia with the and then Trigger said, right fuck there. it, I'll blink forward. What's the worst thing that could happen? And it's like, well, it's five immortals like, on stalkers only. And he yeah, he's going he full cuckoo in. Denial on that shot. That was huge. Kind of pulling now, it off. These DTs are still running amok, and they will also force Astraea to retreat. Trigger actually has the majority of his stalker army here as well. You see this now what I meant? SRI, like, you can just never call insane. games between these two. Ooh, nice this is ridiculous. <laughs> if the games the lead into it, the, this kind of a game, it's impossible to make proper DTs predictions. Revealed, as well as those <laughs> Zealous doing really well. Trigger's multitasking, both of their multitasking, is so impressive in this game. Both of these players have been losing so many workers and bases left and right. The Zealots are going to actually be what? dealing with opponent, uh, opposing Immortals. A strand man of losing one or two of these immortals after that recall, but he does still end up getting the cleanup over there and saves the Nexus very importantly. He's only got 37 workers right now. Both these players are still trying to make as many workers as they can because they actually still have bases to mine with. What is from, happening? But they just need the worker counts and they still have the Nexus to remake things. It's just so awkward and so difficult. The stalker run by also causing all sorts of problems because recalls on cooldown. Trigger is doing such a good job of utilizing these stalkers to keep dragging Astraea or uh yeah to creep dragging no! Astraea back. Oh, oh the friendly no! fire nova. Of course, the, the only thing that an NA PvP was missing. Counts. Army supplies are not particularly big, and Astraea is now oh. gonna be able to click down this Nexus. 56 probes going down. Ooh, we are gonna see the disruptor. Another one. He whips the shot, pulls it back. Trigger starting to crumble a little bit under the pressure of this game. He's sitting up in supply, but a lot of that supply is still just the workers. And after losing one or two of these bases, the workers, I mean, they're still getting some mining, but there's definitely some oversaturation in a couple of these bases that makes it 63. really difficult to find. The Look on the left side, guys. The supply is a little bit misleading. He's going to blink forward. He's going to find a couple of these immortals. Two of the immortals already going down. Oh. And there it is. That is enough to overpower He's done it. trigger. Finding a critical fight there on that left-hand side. <laughs> What a game number one to start things off for the NA region oh there. My. Trigger and Estrella. I mean, you hyped this series up pretty hard. And to say that it's delivered would be very appropriate. That is already a hell of a game one. Yes. Both players matching each other blow for blow, shot for shot for 21 minutes on Oceanborn. It looked really, really good for both of them at many times throughout that game. <laughs> And I, I think that's one of those games where if you asked which player, or if you asked each player, where would they like to resume from replay? And you didn't actually show them the replay, you could get seven different answers from each of them. <laughs> because there were so yeah. many different spots where one player was ahead, then the other player was ahead, then the other player, like it just teeter-tottered so hard. It really did. And it just kind of reminds me that both of these players are so good at taking hits to the face and just like punching back, basically. <laughs> They're really, really effective at doing counter damage in order to equalize. Like as they're taking, if they're being attacked, then they'll attack back. If they're taking harassment, then they'll find some big army fight that they can force out while the harassment is going on. They're constantly doing these trades. And I think that's what caused that game to get so chaotic is that they where there was just this never ending flow of small skirmishes and small little fights or even big fights that were happening at all given time uh, points of time because the trigger no pun intended the trigger for one of these players to initiate another battle or to move across the map was that they were being attacked and i think that was what made that game so so much fun i'm i'm excited dave we get a game number two now yeah we do uh, and I think this might be the first time we're seeing this particular map today. Dynasty. Which is kind of surprising because no. I feel like it's it's been one of what the... What could it be that we haven't seen yet? Maps. Oh, uh, Crimson Court. Uh, of the new pool. And that's not to say Crimson I don't Court? like the new maps. I, I'm actually a big fan of them. But we have seen a lot of weirdness. No, we did see Crimson Court. And generally speaking, when one we didn't weird see. maps are presented in the beginning of a season, you usually see players stick to the more stock standard ones. So I'm surprised that this is the first time we're seeing Crimson Court. No, well, Regardless we did though, see it, no? Here we go. Or am Flying I just... Up at the top right, it is I feel like we played Australia. this one. Did we play this one today? 
And down here on the bottom left hand side of the map, we have the red Protoss player. He is Trigger from. Maybe I'm just thinking of my games. I did some ladder games and I was playing on Crimson Court. That really was just such an even game for so much of it. In, but like not in normal even games where you know they have like similar stalker counts they're both going for the same thing one guy's upgrades finish the other guy's upgrades finish you're like oh 20 second upgrade timing difference no that was like they both had advantages that kind of counterbalanced each other for a very <laughs> long time uh finally trigger was able to break the game wide open with that dt harass but even even up until the point when it was like 26 probes to 52 or something i'm going to pause the like, stream guys know, for man, like two seconds because then i actually think the the lag will stop Drea's already pulled like three rabbits out of his hat this at came, least i'm like, gonna try <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been surprised if he'd managed to find a good enough fight to keep it going and rebuild that probe count yeah i mean truly that was a absolutely wild game with a lot like you were saying before i think there were so many different points in time where those players could maybe be thinking such a quick expand by the way by uh trigger this game what the hell what is this a little bit differently i think that game would have one gate nexus before cybercore quickly bring it back to something that we did greedy the boy beginning of that last game which we kind of were briefly remarking on the lack of wall in from astrea yet again kind of showing its face again yeah and He's gonna stick with it. I almost feel that Australia needs to just go for it now. Like Chrono Boost, Warp Gate, and just go for like a 3 gate, a 4 gate, whatever the hell you wanna do. But I kinda think you need to do one of those things. If you don't, this is gonna be a very difficult game. I also was like, I, I had to do a double take. I'm glad you were talking during that, because otherwise I would have been the one that looked like the fool. But instead, it's you. <laughs> Can't wait to see a thread on Reddit about how Ravi doesn't. Yeah, yeah. He's got a probe literally in the main base. Um, no, Sentry is not yikes. Like, Sentry is this. smart. He just does not do this. Like, I cast a lot of games of StarCraft. Stargate, I don't know, but let's see. I don't know the last time he's gone for a low ground expand when he does this. Maybe it's happened once or twice. Maybe I have missed those, those crucial games, but the only time he usually goes one gate expand is when it's, you know, a map like Site Delta or Amphion or uh, Post Youth. He usually doesn't go for this. This is quite intriguing. And I like that he's kind of mixing things up a little bit here on this map. And he's actually gone two sentries very quickly. <laughs> but they, they're not that strong. They can't fight away from the battery. Yeah, I know that everyone is very excited about the sentries being able to do such big shield damage. But remember that after the shields are worked through, you still have to actually deal damage to the unit itself, like the hull damage. And sentries still don't actually deal that much damage past the shields. So it does it does still require the battery. It does still require a backup of like an additional stalker rallying out or something. So yeah, Astrea does deplete the energy of the battery for whatever it's worth. But he is returning home, so I don't think it's going to matter too much. Just nice little poking and prodding there. Well, and the different sentries do between a shielded stalker and an unshielded stalker is even worse because of the armor that a stalker has. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're even doing minus one damage from the minus shield bonus damage. Like it's. I mean, to me, it looks like this game is going amazing for Trigger. Like legit kind of amazing. The man is up 10 workers and he's not in any danger of dying. get the save on that one probe of the natural, but... At least Estrella is able to get back into the main, finds a little bit of damage. But against a very quick expand like this, there's a reason Max Pax has made this his bread and butter for so long. You get a disgustingly strong economic lead off this. Yeah, I also, I just realized there's two shield batteries that triggers natural. Like, that's actually... Because he was worried about crazy. gateway pressure. Yeah. He was worried that, like, oracles would occupy units in the main and that the other gateway units would attack his natural. So that's why he went for the backup battery. Which is fine if you're still up, like, four, six, eight workers, right? Just like, yeah, these sentries, they're kind of taking a beating. My first shield battery is out of energy. Uh, and that's the thing. When you are when you have such a strong economy off of that one gate expand, you can kind of afford to be a little bit more frivolous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you want to. Obviously, he he would have loved to have built no shield batteries, but I don't blame him for building the second one, actually, in that particular scenario. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. And as 
kind of just like nice at the end of the day that a was able to put on that enough pressure that he scared trigger into doing that Wait. maybe like oh. equalizing it a while ago australia played one of the coolest pvps we've seen in a while i think it was against gong fu right was it against gong fu on this map where he meant he went mass oracle stasis trap everywhere into colossus I actually think he's not going to stop building oracles here. I don't get to say anymore. There was an amazing game I saw from Australia, but I forgot what it was in. I think it was in the big rain bouts, actually. It was in the Basilisk big rain bouts on this map. He goes mass oracle into double robo colossus. No, he did not lose. He won. He won in the most convincing way. It was fucking cool. Especially strange to see four oracles in PvP. Yeah. I really wonder... Do you think he's going to try and just like pair them off as two different sets of that's, oracles? Yes, and just, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. Um, he's just he going to drop a million stasis drops everywhere. That's what he's going like to do. Maybe and then he goes Colossus. You have a lot of unexpected opportunities with this. Uh, looks like a stalker got killed. Yeah, Trigger's stalker was... <laughs> Wait, what the hell was it doing on the other side of the map? And there it is. There's the two oracles into the natural. They will be able to grab five probes. Both players took their third Nexus at about the same time. So as a result of that, Astrea is now up a couple of words. Yeah, it actually it looked really strong. powerful, that game. Look, yeah, fifth Oracle. Really, really nice play there. He's making another Oracle. Yep. Uh. Dave, he's making a fifth <laughs> Oracle. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm just imagining this horrific scene where it's a Protoss player who has two Oracles outside of each one of your bases. He should, right? Got them uh, Twitch. A little bit it's a basilisk event on his teammate's like channel he should have seen it but but yeah, looking at the way he's playing this i don't think he did <laughs> you're gonna see like a sixth and a seventh and an eighth map, oracle as well guys believe it or not i don't know I, I don't think you can just absolutely do that uh by the way when you get to five pen, five oracles it is the pentacle in case you were wondering Okay. Well, can we get a hexical? Yes. A hexical sounds pretty cool. He you can get a hexical. You can also get a septical. A of a lot of There's number now. six. You can get an octical. Oh my God, we're going. There's another way to describe this one. But we won't say it on broadcast. He's gone for the hexical. What did he want to say, guys? I don't even know what you're referring to. I don't to get Dave, it. So, uh, I'm glad we'll discuss it off broadcast. <laughs> yeah, and I, I have no <laughs> idea either. What? We have a prism coming out here from Trigger. Alongside the a sextical? Archives, okay, well, that's not that bad. If Demu can talk about arseholes, wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of let him say sextical. About in like the next <laughs> 30 seconds to a minute or so. But again, it's actually really hard to pull off when these oracles are still being annoying. And at home, there's all the stasis traps being thrown out. There's yeah. also potential that even if you clean up these two oracles, there's two more oracles behind it somewhere. <laughs> Oh man, it, it's just it's oracles all the way Number down seven. at this point. Uh, and behind all this, there's so much static defense. In addition, yeah, Astrea is just winning this. Style. The trigger is just like, what like the fuck is happening in this game? Protoss mech or something, but like yeah, this build is very sick. Banshee mech. He's building a seventh oracle. Yep. God, I love Astrea so much. He is my favorite. Not even my favorite player. He's just my favorite. He is truly just, you know, a unique Protoss flower who <laughs> blooms in his own way. This Look is going to be nothing but the stasis oh, traps. In the, like, you guys should have seen that game between Australia and Gongfu on this map. It was actually insane. There was just stasis traps everywhere. And, even if he and does, every 10 seconds, the army got really stuck. There, there might even be more stasis, stasis traps right beyond it as well. Yeah, you never want to run a run into an angry Stacy like that. Uh, we are going to be yeah, seeing the Archons YouTube. waking back up. And here is the charge up the ramp. There is the cannons getting absolutely blasted. This Immortal Archon army is super Stasis. strong. All jokes aside, uh, Oracles do not help out in this straight up engagement. But the Stasis Ward will help out. <laughs> and now the Immortals don't help out in this engagement either. What a Stasis Ward right there. And that might very well turn this fight Kills on its head. And there come the Oracles raining justice from above. Oh my Oracles. god, this is so sick from Astrea. They actually deal quite It is so damage. sick. There's not that much and I would be here. losing the my stars. mind. Do if I didn't already see him do it. Oracles, and the immortals will also tie like, it's the actually problem. really sick. Last time I saw it, I could not believe it. And now I can believe it because I've seen it before and he just wins with it. Base, so he does manage to mount to defense. He is going to be up about 20 army supply, but that is basically where his supply advantage is right now. 
and now we're in a weird situation where i think astrea has the better army i think he still is in an advantageous position after all that fighting but both of their economies are in yeah it was on this map spots. as well and i think there's an opportunity now honestly trigger is doing better than gongfu was doing because trigger's army was actually doing kind of good spot i think he's in but... such a brutal position right now plus two attack is finished uh, let's see. No Trigger is definitely doing better than Gung Fu was doing. The losses are going to be really good on the narrow corridors of Crimson oh, Court. Cool. Oracles. Okay, well, they will this, get... This is a great moment, I think, for all these Immortals. Now. Another decent Stasis Ward taking an Archon out of the fight. The main problem is, is there enough front line for Astraea? And as long as he can keep those Colossi safe, he should be good in this game, in my opinion. Stasis Wards have been so cash money for him here yeah they, i mean they've truly been doing so so <laughs> much work and he's gonna be able to keep the base alive he's a little bit supply block right now so some of those reinforcing uh gateway buffer units you were talking about are gonna be a little bit late to the punch but there's the unsupply block as the nexus finishes on or uh, sorry more pylons and stuff finish on up and astrea is gonna have his plus three weapons about halfway done after all of the fighting has finally ceased trigger i agree with what you said like i think that his firepower is lacking the upgrades are also lacking but i think he's he's staying in the game and i think he's buying himself time to get up his own transitions i think if he's able to get up those transitions this game can re-equalize i don't think triggers out of this game just yet not necessarily but it is an it is an uncomfortable yeah, disrupt is big good sure. i he guess has, uh probed up quite hard oh actually does lose this one or leave this one zealot alive Good job cleaning up the War Prism in the natural. And Trigger actually does take a probe lead, now up by 10. I, I feel like with five plus three, soon to be plus three Colossus. I think multiple the, I think uh, multiple robots be a good call on Trigger's side. I like the second one. Charge I won't charge. even hate a third one too. Surely that's just Like just stop attacking like with tiny armies and get a right, big right? ass army. And then I starting the fight with seven right. oracles is obviously not going to be off, great. Direct fight, especially at a choke point or something, those colossus should absolutely shred through. I think if Trigger can find a big roundabout kind of uh, engagement, yeah, big maybe he can like buy time. But I think you're right. This is going to be the big time for a straight hit. He's up about 40 or like so army supply, and this is not the angle that Trigger wants to take a fight at. No, I, I really just don't think he can. He needs disruptors, and he needs them now. One disruptor getting one stasis ward. There's another one that just popped out. But this is going to be lost mining at this base. This is going to maybe force Trigger to take the engagement. Very nice blink forward. Grabs the one disruptor. And Astrea will, or rather, Trigger will complete his plus two weapons. But Astrea is on 3-1-1, one, one, even still. And these Colossus, you can't really flank this army with that many stasis wards about. Yeah, it's so but you can fire balls. Oh, balls are good. Go for no like, oh, that's a great battery. Oh, Nova! Oh, my God. Oh, oh okay. Big oh, blink oh. forward there from Trigger with the disruptor shot. Almost goes uncontested. The blink at the very, very last second does manage to get those stalkers out of the way. Yeah, but it still killed two Colossus, which is big. Col Disruptors counter Colossus super freaking hard in certain situations. We are going to see the Stasis Ward not getting that many units. There's a the blink forward. We'll snipe the Disruptor before it can get its big shot off. This army supply is relatively close, and triggers continue to keep these immortals alive. Very Actually, nice a sick job game, though. Triggering those stasis trappies. One more will get taken down by the disruptor, and somehow I know the supplies are still favoring Astrea. Somehow, trigger actually holds. He's holding on for a little bit. He's going to try and rotate around disruptors. Still continuing to try and grow a number. He's been losing a lot of them. Disruptor kills off the stasis trap because I think he lost the observer earlier on, uh, thanks to like a revelation or something. But we're gonna see Trigger able to at least hold the ramp. These guys are having such longer. a cool Especially series. The shield battery <laughs> overcharged. The mining is a little bit tough right now. The oracles have actually been mostly just throwing down the stasis trap. Oh. Haven't really been getting involved in the fight. Colossus goes down. We're starting to see a bit of a scary moment for Astrea where the disruptor count is continuing to rise and the Colossus count has been whittled down a little bit. It's three right now. Oh, as I say that, actually, Astrea recognizes the trigger kind of abandoned the base and that will allow trigger to blink or pardon me, Astrea to blink forward aggressively. He is going to. Oh, nice uh, stasis ward right there on the third base defense. 
this this feels like Australia should have been able to win this game so long ago, but Trigger is putting up such a resilient defense. He Flanking really is. Disruptor, that disruptor maybe? count has grown so much that it's actually gotten to the point it's scary to just blink forward aggressively onto these uh, disruptors, to blink forward onto the stalkers and the immortals and everything. Trigger needs so to get more army supply. Goes, no! Oh, okay, a little bit of friendly fire there with the disruptors. That's so donating like, army supply. That's not getting more army I think supply. The angle for this base fire Nova is stalkers really stalk what's doing. Uh, trigger in the most if trigger yeah. had a i think it's kind of over at this point side base, I think australia is really too cool <laughs> this base it just feels so impossible to defend against when your opponent has blink stalkers and colossus that are just able to abuse that ridge so much yeah and kudos to australia has done a great job of doing exactly that uh another oracle just got produced by the way so we're back up to the magic number of seven mm -hmm. and what i was just gonna say is those oracles could theoretically as long as they're stasis trappies defending this army they could theoretically go for that left side base and just try and gun it down but obviously he is going to come back here oh, oh this becomes really weird for australia because trying to push into the disruptors is very different from trying to you know push into like a defensive position getting some chip damage and then backing off I love this yeah. right now trigger <laughs> kind of holds that high ground it should be impossible for this tiny army to win the game bases here for Australia. this could be the start of something but it's going to be so difficult and Australia, he's not going to really have to worry about reinforcements for trigger's army trigger can't really reinforce this very well no he cannot perfectly measured blink forward right there we've actually got a flank coming in from the stalkers of Australia. He will uh, dodge this one disruptor shot on the bottom side. Top side disruptor shot is good, but it doesn't matter. They're maybe not as devastatingly strong. I'd be losing my mind, guys, if I didn't see him already do this in our own event in the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. Because uh, when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh my god, what is happening? He's so cool. And now I see it, I'm like, it's actually going to work again, isn't it? Australia is just having so much fun while playing very high-level StarCraft that everyone should be jealous of him. Staved off being flanked for so long. Yeah, I think you were absolutely right. Like, that was a game that Australia had garnered a strong advantage in. I don't think there's any disputing that, really. But trigger really showcased why it was going to be difficult especially with great disruptor control and like a lot of these small things he was able to do to try and buy himself time and space i really just wonder if trigger had been able to abandon that location earlier and taken like the left hand base sooner i don't know if that would have been the right decision but i wonder what the game would have looked like because i feel like that base became more of a liability than it really was paying off for right it became just the point of contention that those colossus and stalkers mass oracle colossus into stalkers cloud play seven oracles in a high level pvp really just stasis traps everywhere but the colossus and the stalkers are going to continue to whittle away at all of those probes that try to mine from over there it forces you to rotate around this very awkward angle constantly back and forth back and forth uh there's i have so many questions about like how that game could i actually think uh this style a game like this could work, yeah, in PvZ too, especially on a map like this. Villa's getting beaten, Lethal's having a meltdown. They're in overtime, Bully. Overtime is, uh, I'm watching. I mean, Leo is not bad. I have it on. It looked so impossible. Like, to my eyes, I'm like, no, surely he dies now. Like, there's five plus three Colossus. So Villa won the first game 2-1, and now Leo is winning 2-1, so they're in overtime. So is Rainer's team, by the way. Fiorentina, but they just scored. <laughs> Even though Rainer doesn't care much. But They're both doing things that are really cool and very difficult to Slotty Roar. Slotty Roar. I have no idea how to pronounce your name, matey. Top for five months, loving the coast stream. Yeah, it's been a long day, and this has been a very long series. This is what I get for signing up for NA, but it's been a lot of fun watching these games. I'm very happy that ESL allows me to do this. Otherwise, I'm watching all these games by myself. And yeah, I can type a little bit on Discord. But now at least it still feels like I'm kind of doing my job as a streamer. And it's legitimately the easiest thing I do on stream. You guys like it. I like it. So it's a win-win-win for everybody. It makes for such fun games as we get to move into a game number three of this day. We get a, we get a third game from these two players. We it sure can't possibly be another banger, though, right, guys? This has to be it.
it is Trigger. Trigger had a really good start, by the way, in that previous game. And if he would have somehow expected the multiple oracles, I think he could have been a bit more ready for it. As we have a tiny pass. But build order wise, I think Trigger had a big advantage. So. It's a shame that he could not capitalize on it. Yeah, almost. Regardless. You may not. <laughs> oh my god. They're very good friends, by the way. For the two people who think that's weird, they are very good friends. And Trigger literally flew over from Canada to San Diego like two weeks ago to hang out. They lived at each other's place. They're buddies. They're bantering. I'm so sorry. I don't want this. And they're like, well, I'm sorry. Uh, hands are tied. You know, you said he can't do it. And then he left. That's, uh, that's uh, You got the victory screen. I don't know what the... I don't know what the bug is. Something about a scroll bug, but... This, it was like mostly a joke, but I remember there was a collegiate event. Not even like a collegiate starcraft like league or, or a csl event or anything it was just a local lan event at my university i remember there was a tournament match where someone typed gg and for some reason his opponent instinctively just did f10 and like hit the surrender button instead of thinking that it was like the score screen like they just their brain went to autopilot mode so they forfeited and then there was like a little bit of a contention there because that one player was clearly very dead but they were like, but my opponent forfeited. I had a victory screen. So surely this counts for me, right? That's funny. Thankfully, I... thankfully they kind of like turn around like, okay, I'm not going to be that guy for like this local for fun StarCraft LAN event. But there was a moment that they considered it. And I'm like, oh man, don't be that guy. Uh, fun fact. This, this is actually a, this is a really funny one to me. So there was a there was a player, and I, I don't want to you know get into too much, but he was a little bit. Uh, let's say he was a little bit controversial, uh, and his name was Wasif Khan, also known as Combat X, uh, who is a very he is he had a controversial past, uh, very like BM, not not the gre the best manners on the ladder, but he actually went to a a, a tournament that was at a local university. And he was playing in it, and he was playing a best of three, and he was up against a guy, and he was up 1-0, and he had straight up won the game. Like, it was completely over. Um, yeah. But he typed a manner aggressive GG. I love how I didn't want to get into it, and then named the player, and he's going GG into aggressively. it. Or if you just type GG, that's a forfeit. So he just lost, and then it went to game three. He won anyways in game three, but it was yeah. still like, oh, that's really funny. That is that's really funny. That's actually really funny. That's actually pretty amazing. It was, uh, it was a brilliant, like, um, mess around and find out moment, we'll say. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we're moving into game number three. We are finally ready. There's no more drag scroll bug there for Estrella. As he is up here on the top right-hand side of the map, I already said his name. It's the Blue Protoss player. He's Estrella, Max Angel. I hate when I do that. Like, I when I say when I trigger that. before I do the intro... Spawning down in the bottom left for Basilisk, gets Trigger. I like how Mapu was like, oh, I, okay. Been a very fun <laughs> like series, I Goblin. Do, but I don't like game one, they legitimately all went all Omega all full all NA. And in game two, Australia like did a super cool build, but I've just seen him do it like a week ago. <laughs> so I'm less excited than I should be, but I thought it was awesome. It's been a really cool series. Okay, introduce the players properly. Just, just do it. Stop messing around. I, I, I don't know why, but well, I do know why. Um, as soon as you like did the ha ha ha, I thought of the Swedish chef, like instantly. Like, oh, hurdy gurdy gurdy gurdy. I didn't know what you were talking about. I didn't know you were talking about until you did that. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. I don't know what they're talking Our about. Stutters. Oh, oh Ooh. boy. We get a proxy. Do you guys know what they're talking about? The Swedish chef? Uh, Astrea also. Went for a wall in this From game. From the Muppets? What? Yeah. Uh, okay, I don't yeah, know. that is notable. Uh, this is really interesting because after two super long PvPs, you might not be thinking. You might not be thinking 100% clearly where you're like, okay, yeah, I got to check for those minerals, make sure they're not mined out. This is going to be almost certainly a three-gate robo. At the very least, there's, of course, that robotics facility proxied, but Astrea with the read potentially going for his own defensive robo this is so good for Australia on paper 
Yeah, it is, but this can still go in many different ways. I actually think that a quick stargate on Trigger's side could be massive. Phoenix are very sick in one base against one base. So. Make things look so, so I feel like whoever goes Stargate There's first here is actually going to be in a really good spot. Sees. All right, the mineral patches are mined out. Let's go to the common proxy locations. But like you said, he's already kind of suspected what's coming on out. Adepts are going to be in the middle of the map potentially. Oh, I think Australia was trying to use the Zelnaga Watchtower, the Hidden Vision area, to try and yes. ambush Trigger. But yeah, didn't end it's not just that I love Phoenix. I just think Phoenix are very good here. That good against the War Prism Immortal Arrest. I mean, it's a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors where if you go Stargate and the other guy goes Twilight, then Twilight is better. But normally you never go Twilight here. You either go Robo Bay or Stargate. So I feel like Stargate is actually very good here. This is really uncomfortable for Trigger, but it's not a guaranteed win by any stretch for Astrea because we have seen Protoss players, especially in Europe, players like Aerog Fire. Uh, you can know that the three gate robo is coming and you can still just die to it Yeah, I mean the reality is it is still a micro fight. It is yes. a micro battle Adepts are gonna be making their way in and remember oh, when seal. you are also on the nice. defensive I would cancel the shade by the way cancel the shade mate cancel the shade yeah. are also gonna be Oh, yeah. around. For being attacked. Fuck some shit up. oh, that pylon for trigger actually working against him so hard and Astrea is gonna be able to gun down so many or pardon me trigger is going to be able to gun down so many probes. I did it again. Yeah. Uh, Australia needs to get some big damage on the other side with his own war prism. Ay, 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 ay. This looks really good right now for Trigger. And now he's going to he lose seven will probes. Lose, well, he's going to lose at least a couple probes. And that's actually, that's already almost enough to equalize. Yeah, only a two worker lead now. And keeps both the adepts alive. And the war prism is also still oh. very healthy. Now. Trigger's trying to get some of his own counter damage again with the Immortal <laughs> now in the War Prism, but Immortal there for Astrea. This is a weird game to say the least, but oh, the investment in the Stargate. This is why Trigger didn't have quite as many gateway units warped in, why he was maybe slacking a little bit further behind and say like the Immortal count and stuff. He invested in the Stargate. That's actually going to be potentially massive because he can not only push back his opponent's uh, the War Prism. Sorry, forgot the word for it. Uh, <laughs> Could push back to his opponent's war prism. He could also potentially go for a lift up on his opponent's immortal, which could drastically change the nature of the fight. Absolutely. And uh, if Astrea doesn't recognize this necessarily and is in an awkward spot with those immortals, we could see a lift up when there's a war prism right next to them and they're stun locked. You can't do anything about that. And that's really, really awful, obviously. That's What's very unpleasant. Rico? Now we do see, okay, there we go. The Phoenix does get spotted and it's just one. So Recall will save that easily. Mm -hmm. uh, Astrea's actually significantly ahead in supply now. He's three Immortals yeah. to one. Well, uh, think about it. The, basically, a lot of the production facilities... I mean, Mass Phoenix, I think, is really good here. He really yeah. just has the gateways now. But he I wonder if Astrea is going to try to end it or expand. Phoenix out of his uh, Stargate. So I do think that Trigger is in a bit of trouble right now. I think so, too. Because uh, those Phoenixes, they're really great in small numbers but once Everything. you start getting up to a more significant stalker count and let's say let's say he needs to use all three phoenixes to lift immortals they'll that'll be good for the fight until the phoenix lifts have to drop the immortals back down again like until those phoenix come back into the or uh, pardon me the immortals come back into the fight I bet the best thing about the phoenix is just the map vision that trigger is going to get right now and also there is very little that australia can do to prevent these phoenixes from Lifting a probe and killing a probe, right. lifting another probe. Uh, and then before you know it, Trigger is actually going to be ahead. It's just like it's inevitable that the Phoenixes will kill probes because Australia does not have a... I don't, oh, okay. Oh. For the War Prism, the war prism that's over fine there. too, I guess. Still around. Wow. Is he going to be able to potentially find a pick off there? No, it doesn't. Felt like that was a very complicated way of killing two probes, but... <laughs> that's funny because he could have actually uh, just used... The I actually think that Trigger, by the way, should go uh, charge here. Yeah. If he doesn't go charge, I think he's I, I, fucking up. He should move, absolutely go like, charge here. Isn't that Phoenix lifting with extra steps? And it's like, oh, <laughs> when you put it that way, I guess so. Yeah, he should have lifted uh, probes. I, I think he's going to go blink, to and it might be fine, here. but I actually think he should go charge. Going for another Ooh. one. Guardian shield helps a lot, and those sentries aren't light units anymore. So how do we like it's the game now, guys? Here in this army. 
Yeah, it's kind of light right now as we have two more stalkers finally warped in over there and that is going to help push these Phoenix back. Yeah, Phoenix are really bad against sentries, but the Phoenix it's okay. Four, because the Phoenix attacked mm, twice. Yes. Reduces twice for each, but... Oh, oh War Prism! Is it going to be able to survive? Guardian nope. Shield helps out a little, but not enough. That is a very nice pickoff. I mean, Astraea still... Yeah, Trigger is cooking. Really. He does obviously need to make sure he doesn't die, but why would you die like against a, an army that has barely any NTR? Yeah, he can just back off yeah, of course. and not be too afraid, but I'm just so afraid of a Protoss player that is pushing out on the map where he could get overrun and your opponent has Phoenix and just capture units like this. I think yeah, this game is uh, almost it's over. Like one but... of those situations where maybe because the pickoffs have been so good in the last like minute or so, <laughs> Astrea is just like, oh, well, I, I have to push out. I have to do something before this gets out of hand. Oh, recall will save the immortal. Yeah. Nice job. Uh, but trigger, trigger winning with the Roddy style, baby. Very hard. These Phoenixes I love it. Worth the weight in gold. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I frankly was a little bit skeptical about the Phoenix transition for more than just making like a like yeah, one yeah, like three, three or four Phoenix or something. Yeah. But he has been finding so much value from the kind of doubling down of Phoenix. Remember, it was on a very low economy. So five oh, Phoenix not is not one. a crazy number, but he is just still finding so much value from them. Yeah, I love that he has kept this immortal uh, and war prism in the top <laughs> right because it, it it forces. Stop no, I just have a go XLR fuser. I slide the. Slide it down for my system sounds, and whenever I'm done talking, I slide it back up. Much more difficult to actually get the kind of pickoffs and kind of trades that he has. He's kept. I'm working with these hands, baby. Time, and now Trigger's completed charge. He's got a third nexus started on up. They both do, but it's a lot, a lot faster for Astrea. However, I don't think Astrea can hold it against a, just a shove. Yeah, I, I think that that's what Trigger has to do now, right? Because he has invested into all... No, I'm working hard over here, guys. All day long, I'm controlling stuff. I'm worker. doing my best. He hasn't really been <laughs> as much into the worker count, even though he's been getting a lot of... This is with him getting a lot of pickoffs. And yeah, we yeah, should try to win, by the way, before Blink is done. There's, like, no need to ever let this well, wait. The Pull the units a bit out of position. And fucking like send it! Every single angle on the left-hand side he could go. He's going through every single path to try and make his way over there and that is no we didn't miss our timing we're gonna win the game right now and the game at 10 minutes and 23 seconds is over or even earlier than that warping in units as well the charge lots pinning the army against the wall we do have a nice bit of positioning here thanks to the pylons but there's just so much stuff for trigger and he is gonna be our first player 10 17 gg Congratulations to Trigger and good and over Astrea as well. My man, uh, Trigger truly, truly doing a great job. And remember, that game started off with a relatively... Very well done. And if I can give myself a tiny compliment, I did say that the Stargate was sick in the very beginning. And then you guys are making your very obvious joke. Hey, Phoenix lover recommends Phoenix. <laughs> Ruddy likes Phoenix here. <laughs> Let's be honest. Phoenix were fucking godlike. <laughs> Uh, and watching that and just seeing how effective trigger was with everything there i mean absolutely it it was even in the game that he lost it was such an impressive showing from what felt like such a difficult situation for so long i'm really impressed with uh what we saw from trigger today uh oh they both played great but champ against danger dolan extra mustard on it little <laughs> Little extra velocity. Thank you, ZJ. I appreciate it, mate. Today it was he. He just played so fast and clean. Uh, but we're gonna head to a quick little break, and it will be a TBZ after it. It's gonna be Dolan versus Cham. Stick around. This is the ESL Regionals NA.